hallelujah about Palm Sunday and everybody crying Hosanna from the book of Mark he read and also uh, from the book of Mark regarding uh, them changing that cry from Hosanna to crucify him. And so I'm going to take it up in Matthew 21 and 9, some of the same scriptures in there. Amen. And truly we're praying the words of our mouth, the meditation of our heart be acceptable in the sight of the Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. This just came out of my printer. <laughs> so praise the Lord. Amen. Just pray for me as I bless you with the word of God that he has given me on today. But Matthew 21 and 9 says, the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Now, this is the first time that Hosanna is used in the New Testament. It is recorded in the Old Testament, but this is the first time that it is ever used in the New Testament here in Matthew 21 and 9. For Jesus triumphant entry going into Jerusalem and he is going in as king. He is not proclaiming himself king, but this is the fulfillment, amen, of another scripture in Zechariah, hallelujah, that I will read in just a minute. But Jesus was the center of this uh, processional because if you notice, it says, and the people all around him were shouting. The NIV version says the crowds that went ahead of him him, and those that followed shouted. So if there were people ahead of him and there were people behind him, that meant that he was right there in the midst of all these people as they were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David, blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord. Now John 12 and 13 says, so they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him crying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And this is how we call this Palm Sunday because of them breaking off these palm branches and just waving them in the air and also laying them on the street so that that donkey that was carrying him could walk almost like laying a red carpet, but it was a carpet of these palm leaves is the way that you would greet a king coming in. And we find in the 15th verse of Matthew 21. It says, but when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did and the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. They were angry. They were upset. Hallelujah. Because this expression that they're crying out of him being the son of David and Hosanna, amen, it was uh, uh, valid, validating his his deity, who he really was. They're saying, this is the coming Messiah. This is the coming King. This is the one that was promised, that was set up on the throne of David. Hallelujah. So it says, but the chief priest moved the people that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. So now uh, Pilate is saying, it is written in your rules, your law, this time of the year, we're supposed to release someone that is cast Captive. We're supposed to release someone that is held prisoner. And Barabbas was well known for being a thief and a robber. But yet because of the influence of these chief priests moving the people, they began to get them to go against, hallelujah, hallelujah, go against Amen, Jesus. Now you got to remember all kind of people are here. Amen. There's what about that five thousand he fed, not counting women and children? What about that four thousand he fed, not counting women and children? What about the blind eyes, the raising of the dead? The Bible says he did so much. If you try to put it in books, the world could not hold all the volume of the books. But here, just a few people, Amen, have this influence over them that they are getting the people to cry for a thief instead of Jesus. Hallelujah. And Pilate, verse number 12, answered and said again unto them, what? 
Will ye then that I shall do unto him whom ye call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, crucify him, crucify him. Then Pilate said unto them, why? What evil has he done? What, what, what did he do? What did he do so bad about spitting and making a man who had never seen before that was born blind see again? What did he do that was so bad that he told a woman who was bowed over and couldn't lift her head up and he said, woman, you're loose. What has this man done, hallelujah, that he was at the pool of Bethesda and told a man that had been there 38 years, do you want to be made whole? Take up your bed and walk. Hallelujah. What has he done that you would want to crucify him and they cried out all the more exceedingly crucify him and now his crucifixion is come on hallelujah good friday on good friday hallelujah hallelujah and though that just just five days five days ago they were saying hosanna five days ago they were blessing him five days ago there was praise now this is fulfillment of psalms 118 and 25 when they were saying hosanna uh psalms 118 and 25 it says please lord please save us please lord Lord, Lord, please give us success. Amen. Hosanna is a plea, amen, of, of, of adoration, but it is also a plea for help. In other words, they were saying, stop, we need your help. But then in verse 26, it shifts its meaning of Hosanna, and it means blessed blessed is one who comes in the name of the Lord. So Hosanna is a Hebrew biblical phrase meaning pray, save us, but it also means, hallelujah, blessed, blessed. So the same people who were shouting Hosanna on Palm Sunday were shouting crucify five days later. It seems impossible for people to be so flick fickle, so wishy-washy, but the next thought, hallelujah, was even more concerning than the first. This triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem was shortly after he had raised Lazarus from the dead. Think about that. He's raised a man from the dead, a man that's been in the tomb for four days, a man whose body started breaking down and decaying. He's done this. This man is now walking around among them. This man is eating this man is having conversations. Many of the Jews that believed on Jesus because of that miracle. So Bethany is not that far away from this very spot. Now everyone had heard of the rabbi. Everybody had talked about him. The man from Galilee who healed the sick, who even raised the dead. Hallelujah. But you see this is God's word being fulfilled. Zechariah 9 and 9 says, say to the daughters of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you humble and mounted on a donkey or an ass and on a coat, the foal of a man, a beast of burden. So Matthew 21 and 5 is really the fulfillment of Zechariah 9 and 9. See, everything that Jesus did, it was fulfilling scripture. Hallelujah. Those things that he, amen, did and even what others did to him was the word of God. And the word of God that's been declared, it has to come to pass. Hallelujah. How did Zechariah thousands of years ago know to write that Jesus at that very moment was going to ride into Jerusalem up on a donkey? Hallelujah. It was the Holy Ghost. For holy men wrote and spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost breathed into them. All scriptures given by inspiration of the Holy Ghost. That's why we can and believe this word because every jot and every tittle, nothing is going to fail. It's all going to happen just like it is prophesied in God's word. 
Hallelujah. So now, now all of a sudden, public opinion in Jerusalem, amen, has turned on Jesus. Amen. He was no longer the promised one because they see he's being captive and they are looking for somebody to come in and destroy the Roman government and be the king of kings right then and there. They didn't realize, amen, his kingdom is not of this world. Hallelujah. His, his kingdom amen is an everlasting kingdom he was coming to bring salvation at that time he was coming to save us from our sins he was coming to deliver us so now these people are disappointed in what they're expecting from him for as the believers and the Jews and the priests they are jealous hallelujah they are intimidated by people worshiping Jesus so now some of the same people were shouting Hosanna one day and crucify a few days later. But the point is, amen, they switched in their opinion at the triumphant entry. Jesus, hallelujah, they were rejoicing, but then Jesus, as I said, failed their expectation. His throne was not for yet and not for now. So we then we like them sometimes. This is the point I'm trying to make as I was reading this. Hallelujah. We're indebted to Jesus. We owe him a praise. We owe him acknowledgement. Hallelujah. Well, you might, amen, even join in with these people and praise him. Praise him for what he's done. He's healed the sick. He's raised the dead. He's opened blinded eyes. He's made the lame to walk. Things are good. Hallelujah. And that's how people are. As long as Jesus is doing good things, as long as things are going their way, as long as their family is intact, as long as their children are acting right, as long as they got money in the bank, as long as their job is okay, you know, they're celebrating Jesus. They're saying, praise Jesus. They're saying, what do you know about Jesus? They're saying, Hosanna in the highest. But we don't want to be like these people, hallelujah, and turn around as soon as we confront some difficulty, as soon as we Front, confront some confrontation as soon as circumstances go contrary. We don't want to turn around. We might not say it in our with our mouth, but in our attitude, in our actions, we're really saying crucify him. We're really saying he's just as good as dead. Hallelujah. But no, we want to be able to go with Jesus through the storm and through the night. We want to go amen and stick with Jesus. Hallelujah. Not just for what he's doing for us, but but because of who he is, hallelujah, hallelujah. So now as he goes into the Kitron Valley, they start, amen, his approach, his entry into Jerusalem, amen. The people are crying out there, amen, hallelujah, saying how wonderful he is. But it would be, amen, a horrible thing if we, after being washed with his blood, after being filled with the Holy Ghost, after having, amen, the, the, the true word, of God and we tasted of the heavenly things if we should turn back on God. You know what the word says when you do that? There's no more sacrifice for sin because you're crucifying the Lord afresh. You might as well get your hammer and your nail and boom, boom, boom. Hallelujah. Might as well get your hammer and your nail and drive the nails in his feet. Hallelujah. So we don't want to, amen, have experienced the power Power of God and the power of the things to come and turn around and just because, amen, we go through some rough areas because we come down with an illness because, amen, we lose a loved one, turn our back on the Savior, but we are totally committed, totally committed. Uh -uh, I ain't going to be wishy-washy, Brother Earl. I'm not going to be here today and gone tomorrow. I'm not going to be a fair weather friend, but I have decided to make Jesus my choice. Can someone say, I'm totally committed. I'm totally committed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With which crowd do you identify? I said, which crowd do you identify? Hallelujah. I don't mean which in your most spiritual moment do you profess to identify with, but I'm talking about in reality. Which one of these crowds, think about it, in your lifestyle is more closely identified identified. Hallelujah. Are you shouting Hosanna? And do you continue to shout Hosanna even
even when the going gets rough and the going gets tough, when things go well, hallelujah, but also when things go contrary, can you still praise him? I said, can you still put a praise on it? Hallelujah. Or you're going to be like the other people as soon as tests, trials, circumstance that bring negativity. Hallelujah. Do we begin to doubt? Hallelujah. Who Jesus really is. Do we begin to question? Lord, why are you letting all this happen to me? And Lord, why don't you do something about it? Lord, hallelujah, this and that. Amen. Who is he to you in your time of trouble? Is he still the king of kings? And is he still the Lord of lords? Is he still the El Shaddai, the almighty God? Is he still the most powerful God? Hallelujah. Are we going to begin to question? because our children are being rebellious. Are we going to begin to question him? Amen. Because we got a disappointment in life, we got to have to be like her back. We got to say, even if the wind don't cease, even if there's no herd in the stall, even if the olive tree fell, even if, amen, hallelujah, there's no apples on the apple tree, yet will I praise him. I said, have you got to yet praise? Have you got to yet praise. Hallelujah. Can you praise him when the storm clouds are gathering? Have you got a yet praise? Can you praise him when the doctor don't say what you want the doctor to say? Have you got a yet praise? Have you got a hallelujah praise? Have you got a it's from a good praise? Have you got a I know I can make it praise. I know I can stand no matter what comes my way. My life is in his hands praise. Hallelujah. Have you got it? If you don't go, you not gonna hinder me praise hallelujah I you got uh, I'm going on in the name of the Lord praise have you got to eat me my girlfriend don't want to be with me that's all right I got Jesus and that's enough praise hallelujah hallelujah amen so we don't want to let circumstances make us fickle we don't want to go from Palm Sunday to crucify him as long as it was about what Jesus could do for them and make their lives better. They offered hosannas, but as soon as it came about, hallelujah, what could they do for him? What can I do for you, Jesus? How can I help you? Can I still testify? Can I still praise you? Can I still witness for you? Hallelujah. When it came about that, we know we they, they couldn't, amen, fight off the armies or anything like that, but they could have said, well, wait a minute. He opened my son's eyes. Wait a minute. He fed us when we didn't have no food. Wait a minute. He took my lunch and he fed a whole bunch of people. Somebody in the crowd ought to said, hold up. Hold up. Let me tell you about a man, hallelujah, from Galilee. I was in sin and he set me free. Hold up. Hallelujah. But we sometimes just let people go on and ramble. We don't speak up for Jesus. Speak up for Jesus at your picnic. Speak up for Jesus at your family reunion. Speak up for Jesus, hallelujah, amen, in your classroom. Speak up for Jesus on your job. Speak up, speak up, speak up. Are you keeping silent? Amen. To keep silent when you could say something, hallelujah, is the same, hallelujah, as denying him. But I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but it is the power of God unto salvation. I know there's a king coming. I know he's going to appear very soon. So I got to speak up, hallelujah, when I see the wars and rumors of wars and let somebody know that means Jesus is about to appear. I got to speak up when I see these things increasing in frequency and intensity. When I see earthquakes, hallelujah, increasing more, amen, Privately and also in intensity. We used to not hardly have nothing but six point something, but now we got seven point eight and eight point something, and even sometime a nine point. Hallelujah. That lets me know that Jesus is coming. When I see the planets aligning, when I see, amen, the thousands and millions of dead fish, that let me know that Jesus is coming because all of these things the Lord declared, when you see all of them, lift up your head and look up 
for your redemption is drawing nigh. When I see them marching for pride and gay rights and men loving men and women loving on women, working that which is unseemly, kissing on the mouth on the TV, hallelujah, laying up on each other. Oh, I know I got to cry loud and spare not. Jesus is coming. We got to be committed to the message. We got to be committed to the gospel. We got to be committed, amen, to the word of God. Hallelujah. So as long as Jesus was doing what they wanted to do, amen, they were speaking up and giving him credit. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But when the things thing became hallelujah, harsh, when there was a threat that I might have to go through some hurt, I might have to make a sacrifice, amen, I might have to, amen, uh, go through some punishment or some ridicule. So I ain't just ain't going to say nothing. I'm going to be quiet. Thank you, Jesus. Not committed because they are crying and praising for the fish and the loaves. See, many people didn't speak up for him because they never had no commitment to him in the first place. They had just been following him for the fish and the loaves. How many people are serving God just for what he can do for them? I say they want him to be a sugar daddy. They want him to be a Santa Claus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As long as he's giving out, giving out, hallelujah, they don't have no real love, no real commitment in their hearts. They had followed for the fish and the loaves. They wanted to get something from Jesus. Hallelujah. He's raised the dead. So they call it out, help me, help my son, help my daughter, help me, hallelujah. But maybe, hallelujah, somebody, amen, in the crowd should have entertained the throat. Oh, Lord, I will will not forget what you have done for me. I will not forget Amen. the miracle you did for Woo. me. I'm not going to let it go. I'm not going to let it go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So, amen. Some begin to say, oh, well, he's just doing tricks and some of them call him Beelzebub and some begin to accuse him of being the devil. Hallelujah. And then, amen, but where uh, were the ones that could speak up for him and speak on his behalf? But now, let's shift. Let's shift the scene to Friday. Jesus is arrested, tied up, and being held by, amen, the Roman soldiers. And all of a sudden, it's not cool to follow Jesus anymore. When Pilate comes out on his, amen, balcony and says, what do you want me to do with Jesus? What do you want him to do with Jesus? Stop and think about that in your situation. What do you want to do with oh. Jesus? Here's my opportunity. I could witness. Here's my opportunity. I could tell him about Jesus. Here's my opportunity. But what are you going to do with Jesus in that moment? Hallelujah. When you are a question. Jesus told us that there were costs to being a disciple. He had already warned them, if you're going to be one of my disciples, amen, they hated me, they're going to hate you. And then take up your cross and follow me. Are you able to profess that God is love even when life circumstances are challenging? Are you able to say, amen, he's real when you're, amen, going through your situation? Can you still say he's Jehovah Rapha? When your body is wrecked with pain, can you say he's Jehovah Jireh when you are in lack and in need? Can you still praise him? Can you stay totally committed to him? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What did Peter say? Oh, Lord, I, I, I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to die with you. And he said, you don't know how to do what you're saying. He said, before the cock cries, amen, before the rooster crows, hallelujah, amen, this very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me and deny me three times. See, he didn't realize the price of discipleship. There's a price. Hallelujah. Amen. First Kings 8 and 61 says, and my and may your hearts be fully committed, fully committed. That's what we're talking about. Totally committed to the Lord our God to live by his decrees and obey his commands as at this time. And that's the question. Is your heart fully committed 
amen, to the Lord your God? Is your heart fully committed, amen, to obey his decrees and his commandments? No matter what's going on in this time, because society is changing, the norms are changing, amen, they're trying to popularize things that are against God's word, but we have got to be totally committed, amen, even if we have to suffer for it, even if we have to be persecuted for it, let's be committed, let's be committed even when their suffering. 2 Timothy 1 and 12 says, that is why I am suffering as I am. Yet this is no cause for shame because I know whom I have believed and I am convinced or persuaded that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. This is Paul saying, I'm suffering. I'm going through what I'm going through. I've been beaten. Amen. 39 stripes. Hallelujah. I've been left for dead. I've been thrown over cliffs. He said, I'm suffering and going through all of this because I know who I have believed. I know my Redeemer lives. I know who I have committed my life over to. So even if I have to go through something, I know in whom I have believed. Let's be so committed to the Lord and so committed that we know that no weapon is going to form against us is going to prosper. Let us be so committed that we realize that he that dwelleth in the secret place shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Let us be so committed and trusting in the Lord with all our heart that we're not leaning to our own understanding. So when these calamities, because some of them are coming and we don't know when the Lord will snatch us out of here. So we are going to see the beginning of sorrows. Amen. 26 earth uh, tornadoes touched down at one time, hallelujah, in Mississippi last week. I don't know how many touched down in Little Rock, Arkansas, hallelujah, on this past weekend, but we're seeing sails and swarms of tornadoes. We're seeing sails and swarms of hurricanes coming in one after the other, hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, so these things are going to be, amen, horrific, hallelujah. and if the Lord don't take us out, you got to have enough amen, the confidence to be totally committed that he will keep us through whatever comes our way. Because if God brings you to it, he's going to take you through it. You ain't got to backslide. You ain't got to bend your rules. You ain't got to settle for no crumbs. You ain't got to say, oh, well, the economy is high and income is low, so let me go ahead and shack. You ain't got to shack, amen, to have you something over your head. You ain't got to shack to get your next meal. You ain't got to lie, amen, to be a comfortable and live a decent life. The Lord, our God, he will provide. The Lord, our God, he will supply your needs according to your his riches and glory. Make up in your mind, I'm just going to be a man content. I'm just going to be committed. Hallelujah. I know who's in control. I know who's got the wheel. I know who's handling this situation. Thank you, Jesus. So committed. Deuteronomy 6 and Eight. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Be totally committed to him. Thank you, Jesus. Right. Committed to study his word. He says in 2 Timothy 2.15, do your best, hallelujah, study to show yourself approved unto God. You're not trying to show off to men, but you need to study and know God's word that you might be approved unto God, that you might be able to rightly divide the word of God, divide it, the word of truth, hallelujah, and be convinced that he is able to guard what he has entrusted unto you until that day. Hallelujah. Be convinced in your heart. Hallelujah. That my God, he, I can trust him as I go through this. Thank you, Lord. He knows I'm here. He knows where you are. He knows your exact location. He knows your longitude, your latitude. He knows what square foot of your house that you are standing in right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He 
will perfect those things which concern you. He's got a plan for you and he's not going to let no devil turn it around. So don't get upset about what the crowd is shouting. Don't get upset about, amen, how the world is turning. Thank you, Jesus. And so then we go on and says, hallelujah, we have to be in this race and run this race with patience. Thank you, Jesus. Just stay in the race. Don't get out of the race. Don't drop out on the wayside. Hallelujah. Second Timothy 4, 7 says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And that's what we want to have that testimony. When our time come, you want to say, I fought a good fight. I didn't do it my way, but I fought a good fight. I did it God's way. I finished the race. Hallelujah. And I kept the faith. Acts 2 and 42 says, they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Amen. That's what they devoted themselves to. That's what they committed themselves to. Amen. To get this apostolic teaching and to fellowship. Hallelujah. And to pray and to come together like we're doing now. They devoted themselves to be committed. Galatians 6 and 9 says, let us not become weary in doing good or in well-doing, for we shall reap if we faint not, or for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. So I'm trying to encourage somebody, Sister Sony, don't give up. Your payday is coming after a while. Sister Bev, don't give up. Your payday is coming after a while. Myra, don't give up. Your payday is coming after a while. Hallelujah. Sister Sandra, Sister Mary, Sister Barbara, don't give up. Don't give up. I know you've been waging war in that same battle. Hallelujah. Oh, but you're going to win in the end. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. He said, don't become weary. Don't let your man get so upset. Don't get so stressed out. Don't let panic attacks come. Don't let anxiety set in. Don't be weary weary, weary with what you're doing that's right. Hallelujah. It's always right to do right. Thank you, yes, Jesus. So don't get tired of doing right. You're going to reap. You're going to be rewarded for doing right. If you don't think and don't give up. Hallelujah. You see, because they have Jesus on trial here, their view of who Jesus is is changing. Amen. It's changing. Some people's view of Jesus start changing because the doctor said it's gone from stage three to stage four. So your view of Jesus start changing, but he's still Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our God that heals all of our diseases. Even though my husband's niece, amen, died and went on to get her reward, but she sat right there in my living room. I poured oil on her head and and I prayed and I rebuked and I told the cancer to come out. I told those cancerous cells to be dissolved. She cried out when the power of the Holy Ghost hit her. Hallelujah. And she got her healing. But the Lord just put her in a new, amen, in a new body. Thank you, Jesus. You see, sometimes you get in an accident and they evaluate your car and they say, well, we're going to send it to the auto body shop because it can be re prepared this time. Sometimes God puts you in the auto body and he speak a word and you get healed and you start doing a little better for a little while longer. But sometimes, Sister K, your body get so broke down the Lord said, oh, you deserve something new. Hallelujah. Enough is enough. Thank you, Lord. Let me put you in a new one. Let me put you in an immortal one, an incorruptible one. Hallelujah. I got a model just right for you. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Because he said, if this earthly house of this tabernacle get dissolved, if it get destroyed, I ain't worried about this stuff right here because I got another building not made by hands, eternal in the heavens. Hallelujah. So we still win. It's a win-win situation. That's why Paul said, I'm caught between two opinions. Amen. Do I stay so I can help you out or do I go? 
soul is better if I can go on and be with the Lord because to be absent from this body means I'm in his presence. But for your sake, I'll hang around a little while longer. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But don't cry for me if I go. I said, don't cry for me if I go. I'll just be gone up to heaven. Amen. To get my reward. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So their opinion of him had changed. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But look what we got to be committed. We got to be committed. The song says totally devoted to you. Hallelujah. It says, I want to do the things that you say to do. Show me the way to be like you every day and be totally devoted to you. That's what we want to be. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We want to be totally committed that we can press on. Can somebody say, I feel like pressing my way? Can somebody say, I feel like pressing on, though the trials of life, amen, are, oh, hallelujah, pressing me, I feel like going on. Does anybody feel like I'm going on in the name of the Lord? Philippians 3.13 says, hallelujah, brothers and sisters, I do not count myself to have already happened apprehended. I ain't already made it. Ain't none of us already made it. Hallelujah. I don't care how much you pray, how much you fast, how good you're living. Ain't none of us made it to heaven yet. We still got to keep on pushing. Thank you, Jesus. I haven't already made it. I haven't already apprehended. But this is one thing I do. Forgetting what is behind. You got to forget your past. Forget your past mess ups, your past mistakes. Even and past glory because you can't live off of that but you got to forget those things which are behind you got to look forward get your mind in gear put your mind in forward in drive because you can't go forward if your mind is in reverse hallelujah you got to look where you're going and go where you're looking hallelujah thank you Jesus I'm forgetting what is behind because I'm totally committed and I'm praying pressing forward. I'm pressing toward, amen, what's ahead. I'm pressing toward the mark, hallelujah, of the prize. There's a prize coming. There's a reward coming of them, hallelujah, that diligently seek the Lord. So I'm pressing toward the mark of the upward call, that rapture call of God in Christ Jesus. Don't let nothing make you so disgusted, oh sister Jan, that you lose your hope. Keep your hope alive. Psalms 37 and 4 and then verse number 7. It says, commit thy way unto the Lord. Commit in your mind. Commit in your heart. Commit your ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass and he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday and thy judgment as the noonday it says rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him fret not thyself because of evildoers fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. So don't worry about what the wicked are doing. Don't worry about what the world is doing. Amen. He said he's going to bring forth your righteousness. He's going to bring forth even your judgment. And what that is saying is what people are doing against you, you're going to get justice. Amen. Against them. God is going to amen, bring them into judgment. So you will be getting amen that which you are due because he said vengeance is mine. I'm going to repay. Hallelujah to God. But just keep committing your ways unto the Lord. Keep trusting in him that he is the one that's working behind the scenes. Amen. Somebody said he's like scotch tape. You can't see him, but you know he's there. Somebody else said you got to trust him when you can't track him. I said you got to trust him when you can't track him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to believe to see. Thank you, Jesus. 
us. Amen. Believe to see because we're walking by faith and not by sight, not by what you see. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. So you don't see it, but your faith is in place of it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Your faith is the substance. Thank you, Jesus, of what you're hoping for. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Then we got to be committed to live holy. Hallelujah. Romans 1 and 2 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, I'm pleading to you, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God to present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service in your walk, in your spirit. Hallelujah. That's what you present. Here's how I present God. I got to present it in a body. Thank you, Jesus. That's why my body has got to be holy. I got to serve God in my body and my spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Because folks can't see your spirit, but they can see your body. And your body is how you act out what's in your spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Do you hear what I'm saying? Hallelujah. And a good tree can't bring forth corrupt fruit, and a corrupt tree can't bring forth good fruit. So you're not judging somebody when you hear all that corruption coming out of them. Hallelujah. If you see an apple on an apple tree, I'm not judging your tree. I see your fruit. If I see pears on your tree, I'm not judging your tree. I see your fruit. Hallelujah. So let's let folk see our fruit. It says, amen. Show your good works among men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. They know from the fruit you get Aaron, that you got, hallelujah, yeah. amen, a seed that's been planted in you that brings forth the fruit of the spirit, yeah. hallelujah, amen, lying ain't no fruit of the spirit, fussing and cursing ain't no fruit Ooh. of the spirit, profanity is not a fruit of the spirit, hormoning is not a fruit of the Ooh. spirit, hallelujah, unforgiveness is not a fruit of the spirit, trying to get revenge is not a fruit of the spirit, hallelujah. resentment is not a fruit of the spirit. Animosity, strife, malice is not a fruit of the spirit. Hallelujah. I just see your fruit. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I ain't talking about you. I just see your fruit. Hallelujah. And so we got to put the right seed in because what's in the seed is what's going to bear the fruit. Isn't that right? I can't plant corn seed and think I'm getting tomatoes. I'm going to get what I planted. Yeah. You're going to get, tell somebody, you're going to get what you planted. Oh. Hallelujah not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man saw, that shall he also reap. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What are you sowing? What are you planting? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So we want to be, amen, acceptable, uh, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So don't be conformed to the world. Don't, don't shape up like the world. Don't let the world decide what you're going to pull off the clothes rack. Don't let the amen world decide what you're going to put on your body. Don't let the world decide how much your breast you're going to show. Hallelujah. Folks used to show a little cleavage. It ain't no cleavage no more. Oh, no, no, no. That ain't, ain't no cleavage no more. Hallelujah. That's showing everything. Everything. Everything but the nipples. Hallelujah. But we got to amen order ourselves. Amen. Does this look like God? Is this holy or is it hoochie? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And some folks have lost their mind because they've given their mind over to how the world is thinking. That's why I said don't be conformed. Don't reshape your mind. Be not conformed. Don't be reshaped, reconfigured into the way the world is thinking. Thank you, Lord. Because how are you? These little legging things, they're made to go under clothes. Those are not outer clothes. Those are under clothes. Put something over them leggings. Hallelujah. Do you see what I'm saying? Oh, I'm not be seeing your vulva. I'm not be seeing the crease of your behind. That's under clothes. Put something over the under. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so it talks about here. Amen. We got to be holy, committed uh, to, to holiness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. First Peter uh, 1 and 16 for the scripture, and it comes from uh, the book of Leviticus. 
He's quoting the book of Leviticus in Peter. Thank you, Jesus. He said, you must be holy because I am holy. Huh? You must be holy because I am holy. We've been born again of the spirit. So now God is spirit. That means we've been born of God. Hallelujah. And so if, if there's two African-American parents, they're going to give birth to an African-American child. Yes, they are. Hallelujah. He said, I'm holy. I'm giving birth to holy. So you be holy for I am holy. Thank you, Lord. And Peter repeats that in 1 Peter 1.16. Hebrews 12.15, follow peace with all men. Say, so follow after it. Just follow after it. Huh? Keep finding the way to it. Follow after peace, to be peaceful with people, not argumentative with people, not at strife with people, but follow after peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And if it's telling you, if you can't be at peace with your brother and you can't, amen, be holy, you ain't seeing the Lord. You ain't seeing the Lord. Now you can have your own mindset and say, oh, yes, I will. But you'll see when the day comes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Then we got to be committed to unity. He says, I appeal to you, brothers, by the name, by the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, sound like Rodney King. Can't we just all get along? I I'm pleading with you, brethren, by the mercies of God. Hallelujah. That all of you agree and that there be no division among you but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. We ought to have the same mind and the same judgment, hallelujah, because we're in the same spirit. Thank you, Jesus. And if everybody be led of the spirit, you're going to be in line. How many times have you had a, a, a thought on your mind about the Lord or, or about doing something for the Lord and somebody get up and sing that same song or say the very thing that you were thinking about or the same thing that God had put on your mind? You know why? That's not a coincidence. It's the same spirit. And it's just the spirit confirming itself. So if we're all in the same word and seeking to be at oneness with God, we're going to automatically be at one with God another. Now here's another quote, hallelujah. Un, unless commitment is made, there are only promises and hopes, but no plan. The plan has to be in made. Ain't no way accidentally that you're going to be a man committed. There's no accidental way that things are going to come together. You have to make a commitment to something. You got to make a commitment to your marriage. Your marriage ain't going to just accidentally come together. Huh? You got to be committed. The husband to the wife. The wife to the husband. You got to be make a commitment. Otherwise, you just making hopes and wishes and promises. But without a plan and a commitment, it's not going to happen. Huh? Individual commitment to a group effort, that is what makes a team work. A company, a church, a society, a civilization. A, a civilization. That was said by Vince Lombardi. Vince Lombardi, hallelujah, I heard the name before. He's saying there has to be individual, each one of those people. Each one of those people, each one of you WOW members, each one of you church members of whatever church you are affiliated with, you got to be committed. Don't be so much worried about how committed is the pastor, how committed is the choir director, how committed is the missionary, how committed. If each person tend to their commitment to God and their commitment to the work then the whole thing will be committed. Do you see what I'm saying? And that was said by Paul Meyer. Productivity is never an accident. It is always the result of a commitment to excellence to intelligence, to planning, and to focus effort. Do you think that Friday night vigil was an accident? Huh? Do you think that, that, that I wasn't in touch with all the different people that was going to pray a prayer 
and let them know you're going to be first, you're going to be second, you're going to be third, huh? Do you think it came together accidentally? Do you think we thought of that on Thursday night to do it tomorrow on Friday? No. So productivity for us in this service, for in your home, is never an accident. It is always the result of commitment and applying yourself and focusing and fasting. That's why we did seven days of preparation leading up to it. That was also said by Paul Meyer. But I believe Paul Meyer must have read Ecclesiastes 9 and 10. Look what it says. Whatever you do and whatever you vividly imagine in word or deed, amen, that said do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. But this says do it with all your might. Whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might. Do it enthusiastically. Do it as unto the Lord. When you're doing it enthusiastically, uh, how and you're acting up on it, inevitably, without doubt, it's going to come to pass. I, it's going to come to pass. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's be committed to earnestly contend for the faith. I'm almost done. Jude 1 and 3 says, Beloved. Hallelujah. When I gave all diligence to you to write unto you of the common faith. See, there's a common faith. There's a faith that they were all serving and there was a way they were all believing God and there was a way they were all having church. It wasn't a whole bunch of different churches. No, there was a way. I'm talking about the early church. Amen. The church that Jesus Christ started. The one he said that up on this rock, I will build my church. Amen. There was a common salvation. There was a common way of doing it. There was uh, 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 the same, amen, unified salvation, one denomination, if you want to say, a common faith. It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend or fight for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. The faith, the common faith, the one that started in the upper room in Acts 2, uh, chapter 2. Amen. Keep that faith. Fight for that faith, that common faith. Earnestly continue. He said, I'm exhorting you. I'm preaching. I'm warning. I'm urging you to keep fighting for that faith which was once delivered unto the saints. First Timothy 6 and 12 says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life whereunto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. This is a good profession. This is a good way. So let's continue to fight this good fight. Second Timothy 2 and 3, thou therefore for endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Amen. He said, when you are a soldier in the army of the Lord, look, no man that wars entangle himself with the affairs of this life. You can't get tied up in what the world is doing. You can't get tied up, amen, in the cares of this life. It said, if you in the army, you can't run in and out of the barracks. You can't run in and out of the military, amen. Every now and then you get to make a visitation, but no, when you in there, you sleep in there, you awake in there, you work in there, you clothe in there with the clothes that they are wearing. You don't walk around, amen, in your civilian clothes. No, you get suited up the way they tell you to get suited up. Hallelujah. So he said, No man uh, uh, that's warring entangle himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier and if a man also strive for mastery let it be not uh, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully so it's saying if you are striving for mastery you're not going to get no reward you're not going to get a crown unless you go by the rules amen you got to do it lawfully you ever seen somebody cross the finish line but they said that don't count why you stepped out of your lane have you ever watched the game and it bounce around the rim and it go in but they wave it off it don't count hallelujah amen what 
what happened. You fouled somebody before or the buzzer went off before. Amen. Don't get your works waved off. Don't let your living be in vain. Don't let your singing, hallelujah, be in vain. Amen. But be totally committed. Do it lawfully. Do it. Amen. Like the Bible says, live like God is requiring you to live. Get saved like God is requiring you to be saved. Hallelujah. Make sure it counts because it won't count no matter how wonderful it was. It won't count no matter how much you accomplished. It won't count no matter how good your intentions, no matter how sincere you might have been. Your good wasn't good enough or Jesus wouldn't have come and died for you. Thank you, Jesus. It must be according to the pattern. Look at Exodus 25 and 40. When he was building that ark, you can't make you no designer boat. You can't customize this ark, Noah. I'm telling you how to make it. I'm telling you what you what to use to make it with. I'm telling you where to put the window. I'm telling you where to put the door. I'm telling you how to amen, partition it off on the inside. I'm giving you all the specifications for this ark. So he says in Exodus 25 and 40, be sure that you make it according to the pattern. I've given you a pattern. I've given you, amen, a design. Uh, 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 what do you call it when the architects, amen, they draw that drawing. Hallelujah. Amen. And you've got to do it according to the pattern. Yes, the blueprint. Thank you, Deacon Prince. Make it according to the blueprint. I'm showing you how it's got to to be. Thank you, Jesus. So do it according to how I showed you when you were up in the mountain. See, that's where Noah got the directions and the instructions when he stayed up in the mountain with Jesus. Amen. With God, 40 days he was up there. God showed him a whole lot of stuff. Amen. How did he know that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth? How did he know what God did on the first day, the second day, the third day, the fourth day? Oh, it was because oh, God God. revealed all of that to him. Amen. And when he was in the mountain, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So no, you don't do it your way. You do it my way. And amen. Matthew 24 and 13. Hallelujah says, but he that what? Endured unto the end. The one that endures, the one that stay committed, the one that follows the pattern, the one that does it the God's way, the word's way. Amen. That's the one that shall be saved. He that endured unto the end, that one shall be saved. Thank you, Lord. So let's be committed. Let's not be wishy-washy. Let's not be crying Hosanna or praise God on, on, on Sunday. Hallelujah. And acting like Shanae on Monday. Let's not be praising God on Sunday. Hallelujah. And acting like baby's kid on Monday. Let's not be praising God on Sunday. Got a mean, nasty, low down attitude. Hallelujah. Don't like some people. Hallelujah. And let's not be saying, oh, you know, all these flattering words in their face and stabbing them in their back. Oh, let's not do that. Let's not do that. Hallelujah. Let's be totally committed. Even when it hurts, even when it hurts. The Bible says, swear to your own hurt. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says, swear. I mean, pray and, 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 uh, Care about the things of others more than your step. Hallelujah. So forget your egotistical, amen, attitude in yourself and what people are going to think about you and how it's going to look about you. No, let's do the right thing. Let's just do the right thing, the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. And if it's the right thing to do, speak up, speak up. Let's not be like those people, hallelujah, there in Jerusalem when everybody was crying, crucify them. Let's speak up. Let's not be silent. I don't care if it's your wife. If you know she ain't right, say it and tell her, honey, no. Honey, no. This ought to be so-and-so and so-and-so. Huh? Huh? And I don't care if it's your husband. I don't care if it's your best friend. Let them know. No. This is what the Bible says. Let's do it like this. Let's do it according to the pattern. Huh? Let's do it according to the pattern. Not the mob, but let's do it to the according to the pattern. Not the majority, but let's do it according to the pattern. Huh? So let's love one another according to the pattern. 
Thank you, Jesus. And let's live day to day according to the pattern. And I wonder if there's someone you have been living a good life. Amen. You serve the Lord. Amen. The best you know how. But I want to explain something to you today. Perhaps you had not noticed in the word of God. And most people had noticed it. Like I had not noticed it when I went to a beautician in 1971, hallelujah, and she began to ask me, like Paul asked the people in the book of Acts chapter 19, hallelujah, she said, uh, have you got the Holy Ghost, have you ever received the Holy Ghost, and I was like them, I, I, I said, yeah, I guess I got it, because I didn't know whether there was a Holy Ghost, at least not in the sense that she was talking about, and so she asked me, how did you get baptized? And I said, in the name of the Father and Son, the Holy Ghost. And she said, do you know that's not in the Bible, that nobody in the Bible ever got baptized that way? I said, oh, yes, they did. That's all I ever heard. I was 21, and that's all I ever heard. And so she said, I'll give you $1,000 if you can show me somewhere in the Bible where somebody got baptized with those titles, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Wow. And I was attending Pepperdine University at the time as a student, and I was actually taking New Testament survey class. Hallelujah. I was actually taking New Testament survey class. And so I went home with my thinking I was intelligent self. And oh, I searched, I searched, I searched all through the New Testament, read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And I did see Matthew 28, 19, where Jesus gave him the commission, the command to go and baptize in the name, singular, of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. But I never saw where they said, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, because they didn't repeat the instructions, they followed them. So I did see where Peter baptize them in Jesus name in Acts 2:38 I see where Philip baptized them in Jesus name in Acts 8:14 through 16 I saw where Peter baptized again in Acts 10:44 through 48 I saw where Paul baptized them in Jesus name in Acts 1 through 19 1 through 5 and and I see where he said whatever you do in word or deed do it all in the name of Jesus and I did see where Acts 4 and 12 said whatever you do in word uh no I'm sorry I'm uh, getting that confused it said uh uh neither is there salvation in the other there's no other name given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved and so where did this actually baptizing people and saying father son holy ghost titles come from because it's not in the word of God. Hallelujah. So I submitted to truth and I submitted and went, got baptized in the name of Jesus according to the scriptures. And I began to pray and I began to praise God. And the Holy Ghost fell up on me. And I began to speak in other tongues. I began to speak in a language that I had not learned in the five different universities that I had gone to. I began to speak up out of my belly, began to flow rivers of living water, springing up into everlasting life. And with stammering lips in another tongue, God began to speak, amen, through me. And I realize I have had the new birth being born of water and of spirit according to the scriptures and so this is what he was talking about when he said keep fighting for that like faith that common faith the one that was delivered unto the saints the gospel that Jesus preached that he delivered unto his disciples and then they delivered it unto us the one that Jesus said I'm not just praying for you 12 amen but I'm praying for everybody that will believe on me amen through your words and through what I'm telling you to tell them and so they went out all over and they began to preach this thing and they begin to do it like Jesus said because they were not confused hallelujah and so after 300 years in 325 AD at a council of Nicaea with the emperor Constantine there the bishops got together and they said we need to sprinkle babies and so instead of immersion from now on we will sprinkle and instead of saying in the name of Jesus we 
we will do Father, Son, Holy Ghost. They reverted, amen, back to repeating instructions instead of following instructions. But let us do it as it is in the word of God, because the Bible says, let everything be confirmed in the mouth of two or three witnesses. If you cannot find two, three or more scriptures to validate what you are doing, then why transgress ye the commandment of God by your tradition? Hallelujah. And so we know that God is working. He's moving in these last days. He's pouring out his spirit upon all flesh. And you are not here by coincidence or accident, but you've got to be willing to totally commit, amen, to doing it God's way in spite of how and who has done it differently in your past. Thank you, Jesus. So at this time, amen, if you have never repented of your sins, just having a mind to want to do right, to do better, you want the monkey off your back, the claw out of your mind, you're tired of your stinking thinking, you're ready to serve God, hallelujah, you can repent and have every sin washed away, your Adamic nature washed away, because we're born in sin and shaped in iniquity, but if any man be in Christ, he is a whole new creature, old things are passed away, and all things become new, you can draw the bloodline of Jesus, hallelujah, and cancel the assignment of the enemy, cancel, I mean, generational sicknesses and curses, hallelujah, and above all, you can be a new creation in Christ, born again, born again, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, you must be born of water and of spirit, hallelujah, repent ye and therefore, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, except the man is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Thank you, Jesus. So if you're here on the Zoom or on the phone, you can star six. Just give us your name. We'll pray for you right now. Then I'll give you a number to call. Hallelujah. And I will go over more scripture with you if you require more to get an understanding. But when all that getting, get an understanding. But once you see it in the word of God, you do it. How shall we escape if we neglect so great of salvation. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So hallelujah. Amen. Is there one on the Zoom or on the phone that want to unmute and just say, pray for me and we will get back with you. We'll also give you directions where to go so you can be baptized in Jesus' name and we will pray with you that you may receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. God is the one that pours out of his spirit. We can't give you the Holy Ghost, but God will show sure enough give you the Holy Ghost. We have some that got Holy Ghost on FaceTime, some got the Holy Ghost on Zoom, some got the Holy Ghost on, on, on the telephone, and then others have gone to the church and got the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We can get you to a place. Hallelujah where you can be baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. But I don't know about you, but I am stirred in my heart because I realize God is getting ready to do some mighty and great works, hallelujah, in us and through us, hallelujah, because we have gotten in the birthing position, amen, be determined. I'm in the birthing position, hallelujah, to do the works of God, hallelujah. I'm getting in the birth position because he told me the works that I I do ye shall do also in greater works. This is what Jesus has said about every believer. He that believeth on me as the scriptures have said, out of your belly going to flow rivers of living water. Amen. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They will cast out devils. They will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Huh? So amen. They're going to tread up on scorpions. They ain't got to be afraid of no demons. We ain't got to be afraid. Amen. Of what the enemy is trying to do against us. We've got the power and we've got the victorious faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there one? Is there one that has not? Amen. Maybe you've been baptized 
and water in the name of Jesus. Make sure they say it in Jesus' name. If you're not sure, if there's a way that you can contact them and find out, but more than likely you were not because most people that got baptized in Jesus' name, amen, they let you know that they're doing it that way because we consider it a big deal because we're following orders, hallelujah. We're following instructions, not just repeating them. We will put you down in the name of Jesus. When you go down in the water, you're being buried. The old you and all your mess ups and mistakes, you get buried. And what's buried, hallelujah, is gone. It's gone. You ain't got to pay for what's been buried. Thank you, Jesus. They ain't out in no cemeteries trying to make nobody pay a mortgage. Hallelujah. You don't owe no more. So once you get buried with him in baptism, that connects you to Calvary because it says we're buried with Jesus in our baptism. And that hallelujah, the blood of Jesus, it says that you're washed with the waters of regeneration. Regenged, you get regenged. You got Adam's genetics, but when you get washed and buried, you get regenged. You get new genetics. You get God's genetics. You get God's genes. That's what Peter says that we have partaken of his divine nature. We become spirit in nature. So there's a new man in the old you, and you got to walk after the new man, walk after the spirit, feed the spirit, grow the spirit on the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. But you got to get him in you first. Hallelujah. Hey, and it doesn't come with shaking nobody's hand or saying a prayer. Hallelujah. You got to be born of it. It's got to be poured into you. He said, in the last days, I'm going to pour out of me into you. I'm going to pour out of my spirit up on all flesh. So if you never receive the Holy Ghost with the evidence, the initial evidence of speaking in other tongues.